Hi, I'm Bob German, and this video is Making and Deploying Teams Apps. This video will show you how to create Teams apps in App Studio and deploy them to a team or into the Enterprise App Catalog. You'll also learn how to manage Teams apps using application policies. So let's dive in. Now, if you want to do the things I'm showing in this video, you need to have certain permissions. At a minimum, you need the permission to upload apps. That will allow you to make and install apps for yourself and for teams that you own. This is a tenant setting, and you need to be a tenant admin to change it, and it's off by default. But if you can get your admin to turn it on, then you'll be able to do things right in your regular tenant. Um, you also will probably want to have permission to install App Studio which I'm going to show how to use makes it a lot easier to write the apps. Now, if you want to make and install apps for your own tenant, or if you want to manage apps with app policies, including that upload policy, then you need to be a full Office 365 admin. And if you, do, if you don't have a tenant where you're the admin, let me tell you, you can get your own free developer tenant at aka.ms slash 0365 dev program. Um, you'll get a tenant where you are the tenant admin and you have 25 E5 licenses to use for development use only. So in my last video, I showed you what Teams apps are and what they can do. But let's have a quick uh, review here. Apps can have tabs. Tabs could be pinned to the sidebar, or they could be inside of a team or a group conversation. Tabs really are just any web page. And they can even be configured in the case of a team or a group conversation. Apps can have bots and bots can come back and respond with adaptive cards. So you can have conversations and even have cards that act as little forms as you interact with the bot. In addition to bots, you can have messaging extensions where you're adding to the menus inside of Teams and putting your own functionality so that your team can collaborate directly on business data. How is that for a 30 second tour? So now let me pull back the curtain a little and show you how this really works. Microsoft Teams client is a brilliant facade that stitches together dozens of different backend services, including Office 365 favorites like SharePoint, OneDrive, and Exchange, Word, Excel, PowerPoint, OneNote, and of course all the Skype services, some of them are still there, as well as the Teams services, Microsoft Stream. Your services could be added to this. So when you're writing an application, you either need to provide a web page for a tab, and you could use Power Apps or SharePoint for that web page, but you need to provide a web page somewhere, and that web page has to be able to run in an iframe. And ideally, it has to use Azure Active Directory, but that's for another uh, talk. The nice thing, of course, about SharePoint and um, Power Apps is that they both natively understand Active Azure AD, so they work easily. You could also put a bot inside of that service or messaging extensions, and Teams will knit it all together for you. But how does Teams know how to find your service, your web page, your bot? Well, that's done using something called an app package, which contains a, contains a Teams app manifest. So your tabs, bots, messaging extensions, and connectors, and again, I'll talk about them more in another video, but... Um, all of that gets added, kind of put together inside of this manifest file, along with a couple of icons that get zipped up. And at that point, you can upload it for yourself or for a team you own, if you have permission. You can publish it to the Enterprise App Catalog, or you can publish it to the Teams Store. So let's see how that works. So the first thing you'll need to do is install an app called App Studio. And you can install it from the apps icon in the left sidebar. And then you can access it once it's been installed using the three dots, um, which is where your personal apps are in Teams. Main use for App Studio is as a manifest editor. So the manifest is a JSON file, and I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But the easy way is to use App Studio, which understands all the JSON, and to just fill in all your information here. So here I've got a uh, short name, a full name, an identifier that has to be unique for each app, but uh, App Studio will just generate that for you. A package name, which is generally um, 
your DNS domain name because that um, sort of establishes ownership. If you own the domain name, it avoids conflicts. A version number, that's important. If you update the uh, app, you need to increment the version number or somehow make it greater than the last one if you want teams to take the update. Descriptions, uh, your developer information, that's going to get stitched into the uh, Teams UI when the user goes to install the app. If you're a Microsoft partner, you want to put your MPN ID into the app manifest. Uh, that way you'll get telemetry. Uh, eventually you'll get telemetry. For the short term, we'll at least get the telemetry and can give you some idea how your app is doing. Um, app URLs. So again, these are going to be stitched into the Teams UI. And branding, which is the icons. Uh, you need two different sizes and an accent color. And those icons are just going to get uploaded into the, or just included into the zip file. But App Studio will do that for you too. Now there's two kinds of tabs. Team tabs are configurable tabs. And so they require a configuration page. And that'll be for another video, although I do have a pointer to my blog article uh, that does talk about how to do that for SharePoint and Power Apps. But in any case, you need to have a configuration page. The URL of that config page goes here. And that's how um, Teams knows what to show in terms of when you click and add a new tab to a, a channel or a group conversation, and you actually get to, to configure the tab. Um, personal stat tabs are so-called static tabs. So you just click them, and they come up. There's nothing that you can configure. And you can add uh, those inside of here as well. Bots, well, bots have a messaging endpoint, and you can input that. Later, I'll go more uh, deep in how to set this up. Uh, but you're, you're going to define your bots in here, and you're also going to define the commands. These are not the commands that the bot actually shows. These are, uh, or that the bot actually understands. These are just suggestions that Teams is going to make while the user is typing something into the bot. Um, connectors, I haven't really talked too much about them, but this, this is uh, a way that an external service can send messages into a team. You could also use a bot for that, but connectors is an older technology that also works with Outlook. And messaging extensions are those pop-ups where you can uh, insert things into the menus and allow the user to do things with their messages while they're composing a message or acting on a message. So <clears throat> those actually are also associated with a bot. Doesn't have to be the same bot as the first one. Um, and you're going to have to define a messaging endpoint and commands for that. And if you um, paid attention to the video or if you watched it when it was running a little slower before, you might remember that I had the ability to look up and search for open positions and candidates. And you can see both of those being defined in here. Then there's languages. Um, so what language do, do I support? Domains and permissions. So you have to put any domains that you're going to aggregate, sorry, any DNS domains that your app is going to access have to be listed in here. And then finally, I can test and distribute my app. So if you click the install button, um, you can actually put the app into your own personal use or into a group chat or a team that you're the owner of. Um, so if you're just doing a quick one-off, that's fine. Or if you're developing and testing, that's also fine, right? Later, you'll probably want to download your app and then put, it, put the JSON right into source control um, if it's a fully, fully blown app. Or you might want to download it. You'll get a zip file that you could later upload into your tenant app catalog. And then the last link uh, begins the process of a, Steam, of a Teams App Store submission. So if I click on the apps in the sidebar, you'll see that uh, here are all of the third-party apps that are available to me, as well as apps that have been published just for my enterprise. If you click on built for and then your tenant name, my tenant name is MS Labs, you'll see that um, I actually can have uh, my own apps just for my tenant. If you want to upload one of these, well, just click the upload link and Upload for your tenant name. You have to be a tenant admin to do this. Um, we'll put the zip file as an app in your tenant catalog. Or if you want to upload it for yourself or your teams, 
Uh, it's the same as the install button in App Studio. It's just if I don't have App Studio for some reason, I could take an app manifest that's, that I got from somewhere else, or I could edit the JSON manually with a text editor, put it into a zip file, and upload it this way. So now let's pop over um, to a team, and I'll show you one other way to install an app. This only works for teams, is that you can manage the team, and then if that upload capability is there, there's an up, you'll find another upload link here where you can upload an app into one individual team. Now we're over in Teams Admin. So this is under the Office 365 Admin Center, way down the bottom, and I clicked Microsoft Teams Administration. I'm going to open this up, and inside here are Teams apps. And there's two policy um, screens here. App Policies allows me to an administrator to define which apps are available to users. So you can allow all, allow only certain apps, deny all, or deny only certain apps from each of these categories. So uh, Microsoft Apps is obvious. Third-party apps are the ones coming from the App Store. And then the tenant apps are the ones that you upload into your enterprise app catalog. And then finally, there's setup policies. And these are really useful. You can set up more than one policy for both permissions and setup and associate it with different users. Let me look inside the org-wide policy to show you what I've got going on. Upload custom apps, there's the setting, right? That's what allows the people who this policy um, applies to, in this case, the whole enterprise, to upload their own apps. Also, user pinning, no, no users are harmed and no users are pinned in the making of this video. However, you, this does allow users to pin apps uh, by right-clicking on them uh, inside of the Teams UI. And then you can pin apps for the users and basically customize the sidebar in Teams. It's on the bottom in the mobile app um, and decide what apps are going to be there uh, for your users. So I want to point you to this. This is the reference um, for the Teams uh, manifest. And there's two reasons why you might want this. One is, well, maybe you don't have App Studio and you want to write the manifest by hand. And you can do that. Uh, another reason is it's a great reference for what all the different fields mean. So this was a short video. If you find yourself wondering about one of the fields in App Studio, the best place to look it up is here. Find the equivalent field in the app manifest. Finally, I promised a pointer to my blog, and I will eventually make a video on this as well. But um, this blog article is all about how to take any SharePoint or Power Apps page and make it into an app uh, by either manually editing the manifest or grabbing one actually out of GitHub or using App Studio. Thanks for watching this Microsoft 365 Patterns and Practices video. If you like this video, please subscribe to the Patterns and Practices YouTube channel at aka.ms slash spnp videos. I'm Bob German. You can follow me on Twitter at Bob1German, and please check out my blog at bob1german.com. That's all for this time, and thanks for watching.